I'm Leslie Marsh, and I'm a breast cancer survivor. I started my dreaded adventure in 2006. I was on a weight loss plan to lose weight, and it was working. But my left breast was a lot smaller than my right breast, so I decided to make an appointment for a mammogram because I didn't really know what was going on. I made the appointment, um, and during the appointment, the nurse looked at me and said, honey, we have to switch you from routine to diagnostic. And I didn't quite know what that meant, and then she did the mammograms again, and that's when she told me that I definitely needed to go see my OBGYN right away because things did not look right. So went to my doctor, he did another complete set of mammograms, and that's when he also ordered um, a needle biopsy for me so that they could look at this particular lumps in both breasts. So I knew something was wrong and I knew just, it just wasn't right that they weren't feeling the same. So the, you don't get the results right away. Somebody's got to call you. You've got to come in to get your results. I'm walking out of the, the hospital. I'm feeling just blue as can be. A friend calls me to see if I wanted to go to the Wednesday night concerts in the square in Lafayette Square and all I could do was cry and say, I think I have cancer, and no, I don't want to go watch a concert tonight. Um, it's hard to keep yourself happy and to keep yourself positive in this process of like, what the hell is going on, and I don't know what's happening to me. A few days later, I get the phone call from the nurse practitioner and asked me if I wanted to set up an appointment to come get my results, and I said, no, just tell me now. Um, just let me know now. And she informed me that I had a, about a two-centimeter um, tumor that was an infiltrating ductal carcinoma. Um, so it wasn't the best cancer you could have, but it wasn't the worst cancer you could have. And it wasn't that big. I was only like stage maybe one or two. And so I was feeling pretty good about it because, you know, you see a lot of people survive stage one and two. So I figured I was in good shape um, after meeting with my general surgeon. And we decided that the best course of action for me, because I'm a didn't want to have two surgeries or have to repeat this again in my life, I decided to have a double mastectomy. And he told me about these wonderful doctors, Dr. Sullivan and Delacroix, and the Center for Restorative Breast Surgery, so that I could do immediate reconstruction and eliminate another whole process of surgeries. So I came to the center and met with these wonderful guys that are just so warm and caring and cool and confident in what they do, and um, set a game plan so that I would be able to be the most whole that I could be and um, have the best in town. So my initial meeting with Dr. Um, Delacroix was wonderful. You walk into the center and everybody greets you with hugs and kisses. And they're always warm, it's friendly faces, they call you by name, they always have a, you know, coffee or whatever you need is right there for you. Um, so I had my initial meeting. He told me all the procedures, so I had to go home and think about what I was going to do. So, of course, you go to the computer and you check on their website and you do the research. And then when you read about what Dr. Sullivan and Delacroix have done in their short medical career that they have, these gentlemen have done more for women than anybody that I've ever read about or could research on. After my surgery, of course, I wasn't there, but Dr. Delacroix went out to see my husband and um, he was informed that I had cancer in 16 out of 22 lymph nodes that they removed in the procedure as well. So that put me up at stage three. So the news wasn't that good after the surgery, but my surgery went great. It's just that the cancer may have had spread into the lymph nodes. Get home, a few days after surgery, I went in for a PET scan and an MRI and the news came back that the cancer had spread. So I had already discovered that I had a bone mets, as it's typically called. And uh, bone mets is my breast cancer has, metas has traveled through the lymph system. I have breast cancer cells in my body, and these breast cancer cells have attached to bone in my body. So I had bone mets, and I didn't, it's not a good, that puts you up at stage four. That's it, you have cancer, you're going to have cancer the rest of your life. Um, but, of course, I come back to the center for one of my follow-up visits, and I'm talking to Liz, and I'm all distraught. I have bone mets. What am I going to do? You know, I'm thinking, this is it. She's like, oh, no, Leslie, bone mets. You can live with bone mets forever. I've known women that have had it for 12 years, and she goes on and just, again, this was, she just reassured me that what I had was not going to 
kill me. And that's, you know, bottom line, that was what I was thinking. And she assured me that, no, you're going to be fine. And this has been since 2006, and here I sit today, just as, you know. But it, she just reassured me that I was going to be okay. And it was her reassurance that told me that I was going to be fine. And I am. I went through my six rounds of chemo, survived that. And then after the chemo, I started a monthly infusion of Zometa and um, started taking other drugs. My cancer is estrogen positive. So the way that I fight cancer now is through estrogen blockers. And I've taken tamoxifen and Femera, and now I'm on a third drug, Fazlodex, and that's the one that has stopped the progression. So I'm in great shape. Um, I don't, I still have cancer, and I'll always have cancer, but it's not progressing right now. So life is good. I try to be as normal as possible. I have a wonderful husband of 17 years, a 13-year-old daughter who keeps me on my toes. And um, one of the toughest things these days is to tell people that I still have cancer. You get questions like, well, why can't you get radiation? Why can't they get rid of it? You know. And then I have the people that come up to me and I tell them I have cancer. And they're like, well, you don't look sick. I mean, what does sick look like? I really don't know. But I am. But I try to be as healthy as I can be so that I can live a long and happy life. There really is no bright side to cancer. But a positive change in my life is that I have become a more caring and giving person. When you are sick and you are typically the caregiver in a family and you have to accept the kindness of others from your friends and family in making sure that your daughter's taken to a soccer game or she gets to go to the birthday parties and that she's fed every day, it, it touches you and you realize that there's material things out there that really don't matter, but it's your friends and your family are the ones that care about you and that you can give that care back to them and give back to others is really the, a positive thing that you realize that material things really don't matter. It's what's inside and what you can give to people and what the memories that you make with others, that's what you're going to carry with you all your life, not some piece of an electronic, it's, but it's what's inside of you that's important. The advice I would give women is to listen to your body, to understand who you are inside, and to know that if something doesn't feel right, to go ask about it. Don't ask your best friend, don't ask your mama, don't ask the lady down the block. Go to the professionals and ask them. And don't take your okay for an answer. If you don't feel well, be diligent and know your options and know that you can go to the doctor more than once and say I know something is wrong this is what I feel please check it out and don't listen to your insurance companies go fight 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 for yourself there's nobody out there that's going to take better care of you than yourself